Thanks for listening to Leadership Level Up. I'm your host, Dr. Jeff Williamson, and whether you are just starting your leadership journey or have led others for decades, this podcast aims to shine a spotlight on those who lead others and share their guiding principles that have made them great leaders. Welcome to Leadership Level Up. I'm your host, Jeff Williamson. It's good to have you with us. As you know, if you followed us for very long, we love to bring in local leaders and people from our community and talk to them about their journey and what leadership looks like to them and some of the things that are going on in their world. Today, we have Kayla Benoit with us, who is the founder of Connect Roasters based here in Bourbonnet. And uh, you opened that business in, uh, eight years ago, I think you said. And... Um, and then just recently this last year opened up a brick and mortar location. But that's what I'm going to say. I'm going to let you tell a little bit more about that. But welcome. Thanks for coming in to be with us. Thanks, Jeff. Glad to be here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So long before y'all went into a brick and mortar setting, which is, by the way, one of my favorite places now, um, I think we met at a at an event of the Bridge Teen Center. You were there. Is that where we met? Yeah, I think so. Okay. Yeah, yeah you were right. there and I've been on their board for a long time yeah. and you were at a community event that they used to do Yeah, and giving out samples of coffee and it was this food bonanza of sorts where you could just roam around and graze and try things and you were there giving away coffee yeah. and and we got talking a little bit i'm like oh you 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 live in my town i forgot that we met there i yeah. it's been a long time since yeah it was of, uh, it's events. been years because yeah. it that event ended like a lot of things when yeah. covid took down gathering in one place for a good long time yeah but i think that was it and then once we re once i realized you were here in our community we were just you know, we'd see you more often go, hey, I remember yeah. you. And then you now we'd become friends. And I drink a lot of your coffee. I appreciate that. <laughs> I, I love seeing you in the cafe. Oh, man. I was there this morning. And now it's like I'm almost uh, seeing people like, oh, it's Wednesday. They have their meeting here. Yeah. <laughs> well, if we were to make a list of the regulars, you'd yeah. be, if not at the top of the list, at least Well, in that top, I like to stay in the top, top five, five yeah. you know, for sure. It's safe to say you're there. But yeah, yeah. So I love the vibe there. We'll talk more about that too. But um, yeah, it, it's exciting to see these new things happen. I'm also really excited because you're going to be a part of our Converge Conference, our third Converge Conference coming up on Friday, October the 11th. And you're going to be a part of a kind of renewal revitalization panel. So we've got five or six of our local leaders who are in different ways renewing places and uh, betting on themselves in this community. And that's something that you've been doing for a long, long time. Yeah. I mean, I was I was born here and raised here and spent most of my life in, in this community in Kikiki mm, County. And so, you know, I've had the privilege of going elsewhere and traveling a bit, being outside the country. But it, when it came time to uh, start the business and kind of put a stake in the ground, I... It's my I, town. Yeah. I wanted yeah. to do it here, right? Like mm -hmm. these are my people, my family, my friends. Right. Um, I want us to have nice things. Yeah. And so, uh, yeah. you know, why not? Yeah. And, and of course, you know about some of my travels to coffee places that that's another conversation. You've been to for a few. Another. I've been to You've a few. You've been to more than I have probably. I, maybe, but, but you're still coffee cooler than me. <laughs> Did I just make a phrase up there? I like it. Caleb is coffee cooler than me. I'll take it. I like it. Thank you, Jake. <laughs> Appreciate that. Yeah. That deserves a round of applause. <clears throat> yeah. I'm glad we we're recording because I'll forget what I said. When I <laughs> catch a cool phrase. I'm like, dang, I should write that write down. Write that down. I like that. So you started Connect Roasters uh, originally, eight, I think you said eight years ago. And for a long time, you were only a roastery. Uh, you'd, you've done a, it's kind of been this evolution of growth of the business. So walk us through when you started it and you started roasting coffee and that became your thing because yeah. it's been this, this journey from there to now servicing a lot of locations and, and all that. So talk us through that. Yeah. I mean, when I started connect, it was literally just me kind of like a one man band and it actually predates us roasting for ourselves. Right. Oh, um, okay. I didn't even realize you know, that. I was sourcing the coffee mm. And I was selling the coffee, but we contracted with a with a roaster in in the Chicago suburbs to do all of the production and the oh, roasting. Okay, the order see, fulfillment. I learned that I didn't know that little piece. Yeah, mm -hmm. so it really started like that. Me 
you know, hustling and selling coffee, okay. um, grew the business to the point where the volume made sense for us to bring kind of the production and the manufacturing mm-hmm. in-house. Yeah. And how long did that take? Was that a couple of years in? Yeah, that was, what, three or four years. Mm-hmm. Um, we opened up in uh, Bourbon A is where our first local roastery was. That was 2019, like right before the pandemic, yeah. in November of 2019. Yeah. So it yeah. took a few years to get to that sure. point. Uh, interesting time to open a business. Uh, oh, gosh. Three or four months before COVID. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, but then started roasting for ourselves, mm-hmm. uh, was selling primarily online, direct to consumer through our website, had some wholesale accounts. Uh, we we're doing some events at the same time. We didn't have a cafe. We didn't have a brick and mortar, um, but did events like the local farmer's market, um, the Bridge Teen Center, yeah. hustling, handed out samples, trying yeah. to get the word out, marketing, getting the product in people's hands. Uh all the while scouting, uh, and you know, with you know, opening a cafe in mind, like we so might. that was kind of in your head from early on. And going at some point, yeah. maybe I might open a place up. I mean, I think most people who get into coffee, um, into roasting or retail, like they do it because they eventually want to have a, a cafe. Like that's the most, I don't know romantic part of the business, yeah, right? Um, yeah. That's what everybody thinks of when they think Bringing of- Bringing people together. Right. When you think of a, a coffee business, you think of a cafe. I mean, for a long time at the, the farmer's market here in Kankakee, you know, people would come up, they'd get a coffee, they'd love it. And they'd right. say, oh, where's your cafe? And we're like, ah, oh, we actually don't have one We just yet. do one yeah. thing like this. Yeah, you know? we do this. For years, I remember stopping by and getting something from you guys at the farmer's market long before you opened up your place. Yeah. I mean, we did the farmer's market for probably five years mm-hmm. before we, we opened up the cafe last year. So yeah. kept scouting around, talking to people, and then found the right opportunity in Bourbon A. Uh, mm-hmm. And so we opened up the brick and mortar cafe uh, last uh, last fall. Uh, yeah. So is it, we're less than a year in business in that cafe. Um, but yeah, that's been the latest, the latest yeah, chapter. I, and it's such a great location. It's right across the street from the university. And it's, it, I, you know, the location where you are now, I literally, before you had that place, I drove by there two, three times a day, yeah. just coming and going uh, for different work uh, responsibilities. And so now you guys are just right there. And I think it's such a, a great time. And, and it just occurred to me because you've just been open a few months, this will be the first university fall return of students. Yep. So batting the hatches, man, when they come back in like three weeks, yeah. Yeah, it's we- going to start climbing on yeah. the frequency, I think. Which is good. Yeah. You know, oh, yeah. We're looking forward to that. But yeah, we mm-hmm. get a lot of uh, a lot of foot traffic from the university, mm-hmm. students, faculty, mm-hmm. staff. Mm-hmm. Uh, that intersection, I believe, is the second busiest in the county by vehicles per day. So How perfect um, is that? that obviously helps, right, with mm-hmm. visibility and, and mm-hmm. things like that. So yeah, we love being there. Yeah. Well, I'm glad you're there. <laughs> <laughs> I wanted to kind of pivot back to something you mentioned in the intro that you're born and raised here. You know, this, this area, this community is, is truly your home. Mm-hmm. And so when, when that part of starting your business, investing in the community, uh, talk about that, you know, what, what's that like for you to say, I'm a local guy. We're not kids anymore, but I'm a local kid and yeah. you are. Yeah. And, and I want to do something really neat for my community and, and make a living while I'm at it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I mean, like when you start a business, like you have a choice, right? Like mm-hmm. you can, you can choose where to do it. And because I was born and raised here, because I want my people to have nice things. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. you know, I chose to do it here. we mm-hmm. we could have done it in Chicago. We do a sure. lot of business in Chicago. You do, yeah. Um, but yeah, very intentionally kind of put a stake in the ground here. Um, you know, my wife and I, we've got two kids, yeah. bought a house in Kankakee. Like these are our people. This is mm-hmm. this is our home. Yeah. Um, I, I, you know, like I said, I've I've moved away twice out of the country and found mm-hmm. myself you know, mm-hmm. back here. Yeah. Um, you know, the older I get, the more I recognize that um, relationships uh, they're are, everything. they're everything. Yeah, yeah they're, they're everything. so important, um, whether it's family, friends. And so most of my people uh, are here. Um, that doesn't mean we don't travel and sure. experience other places and other things. But yeah. um, no, we we wanted to, to build the business here. Yeah. Well, and I know you get to Guatemala every now and then, too. And that there's a whole story there with some of your partners uh, when you that goes back to when you first started sourcing the coffee. And so talk a little bit about that. How did you get connected in person? Again, relationships are everything. Yep. You, you know your producers in Guatemala. 
Guatemala. Yep. Yeah. I mean, so one of the beautiful things about coffee is, you know, coffee is grown in uh, often tropical, beautiful places mm-hmm. in the world. So have the opportunity to, to um, go to origin and see where it's grown. And and like you said, meet meet the people who are responsible for the product that we drink on a daily basis, right? Um, and so when I started the business, I uh, wanted to be really intentional about those relationships and bringing that part of the the business and the s- supply chain to the forefront as much as we can. And so, you know, you see that in our marketing. Um, you know, we try to source from people that we know uh, as much as we can. And so we, we try to make that visible. And, um, you know, there's a transparency component uh, to that. Some of the coffees that we sell are named after the farms that they, they mm-hmm. come from. So, yeah, relationships, uh, like you said, are everything, whether it's, uh, you know, in your personal life or, or in business. Yeah, yeah. And I had this and you know what I, you know, the story that I'm I'm leading into. But uh, El Faro is a part of the relationships and the connection that you build over the years. And I was actually there at this mission center on the beautiful coast of Guatemala. You can literally see Honduras mountains from there. Yep. And uh, I was there. It was actually a setup trip for what what ended up not happening because of COVID, but we were there to, uh, to see the place and we're working on a design project for the, for the center there. And I'm sitting there at dinner uh, one night and one of the guys says, so where are you from? I said, well, I'm from Olivet. I live in Bourbon, Illinois. He goes, do you know Caleb Benoit? <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, yeah, I do. He's like, yeah, we, we, we used to live there. We worked together. We're friends. You yeah. know, I'm like, wow, this is really something when I'm sitting it's at a, a small world, table. right? It is. Small. You know, let's like say big world, small world, yeah. right? Because connection is so key. And so there I was on this in this mission center on the coast of Guatemala. And these are po- these are people that you've partnered with and worked with and connected with some of your producers and providers down there. Yeah, I mean, when when I started the business, I wanted uh, I wanted uh, a part of the business to to give back, right? Yeah. I wanted to build in a, a give that. back component to mm-hmm. it. And so from the very beginning, we've we've set aside a portion of our sales to support initiatives in the places where coffee comes from, Guatemala, That's for example. So yeah. you mentioned Mission Alfaro. They're mm-hmm. an organization that we've uh, supported over the years. During COVID, we brought some of that support um, back closer to home sure. and supported some COVID you co- we couldn't travel like we were before, right. too. Yeah, COVID changed a lot mm-hmm. of things. But that's been mm-hmm. a part of the business from the very beginning, right? Like it's a, it's a coffee business. Mm-hmm. Um but it's it's about the for me it's about the why too. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I wanted there to be a, a charitable, uh, give back, philanthropic component of of what we're doing, and um, yeah, proud to say that you know that work continues today. Yeah, yeah. Now going on eight years that yeah. you've existed, and many more to come. Hopefully, I hope so. Yeah, yeah. So I love that before you even had your your shop here in, in the community. I loved that about Connect Roasters is that you you. Read recognize that you have that humility and gratitude to say, you know, we've been able to do some cool things and we want to, we want to contribute to things that are outside of us that are not even here in our town, but that have a global impact in the way we do business. And it, it brings people closer together, even that work and farm and live in Guatemala, but that you see from time to time. So with our conference, that's one of the things in the panel conversation I'm really excited about is that everybody that's in that group, including you, um, we're, we're going to, we want to hear from you then and now a little bit about, um, you know, what does renewal mean to you? What is revitalizing both places and communities? And then, and you've, you've literally provided uh, a place like that, you know, that people can come together. And as I've traveled over the last few years and tasted a lot of coffee too, over and over again, people, when I would ask them, uh, you know, was, when did you start the, you, the place here? Or why did you start this? Over and over again, they would say, for our community, mm-hmm. we wanted a place that people could gather. Mm-hmm. We wanted a place that we would want to go to as consumers. And so uh, I, I've loved that over and over again as coffee shop owners have said, our community. 
And uh, I, I'm, I observed too, as I did these visits again and again, it was like, none of them said, I started my cafe in my hometown or my local community because I want to make my first million in three years. <laughs> yeah. You'd probably get into another business. if. You yeah. Know. Yeah. And, and I love that about that because yeah. it's like, that tells you something about a person's Motivation. business and their heart yeah. even when they're like, yeah, I, I, I didn't start a coffee shop because I could, you know, get rich quick. Yeah. Uh, I did it because of my community. My people yeah. are here, like you said, and, and I want to provide a place that I would want to go to. Um, and you've done that. Yeah. So walk us through some of those feelings about renewal and revitalization. I mean, you took a house that was sitting there vacant yeah, for a good while. That's completely different now. And I know you partnered with uh, another um, individual here in our community yeah. to make that happen, but kind of walk us through like what's going on inside you as this place is becoming new again. And now is your shop. Yeah. So the, the building that the cafe is in uh, was originally a house built in 1910 or 1911, I believe. And so, you know, us bringing a cafe, there was very much a partnership uh, between us and our landlords mm -hmm. uh, who did much mm -hmm. of the, the work and the build out, right. but so cool to see the transformation, right? Like if I showed you pictures of what that looked like before any of the demo happened, you'd be shocked because yeah. you can see what it is now. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah. One of my favorite parts of the building is on the on the one side, you can see where the um, the coal chute is from the original construction of the house. There was a coal furnace. And mm -hmm. so the way the coal got into the house was a chute yeah. down into the basement. Mm -hmm. So a relic from the past. Mm -hmm. um, but I love those little components that remind you of, hey, this place was not built yesterday and wasn't built right. to be a coffee shop. It has a uh, whole story. Yeah, it's been renovated to to do what we do there now. So yeah, um, yeah I love the fact that we're able to, um, again, in partnership with our landlords, yeah. uh, revitalize yeah. that space and, and mm -hmm. make it something that's community facing. Mm -hmm. um, it's not a business where the doors are closed and it's just our employees there. We literally open the doors to to the people who, who live here. and. Um, you know, I think, you know, I think people crave, crave community, crave relationships. People want I to do. See, yeah. I, I mean, mean I think people, most people do. For sure. People want to see and be seen. Yeah. Especially on the other side of, of COVID, right? Mm -hmm. Like I think now more than ever, people are craving experience. Yep. And so that's one of our objectives with the coffee shop, right? Like we want to provide a place for people to see and be seen and, uh, you know, hopefully provide a, a good product while you're there, but ultimately be a place where the community can gather. Um, sometimes that's for a one-on-one -on -one meeting. Sometimes that's a group meeting. Sometimes that's work or study or a catch up with a friend or family member. All the above, man. But yeah, yeah I mean, I've seen all of those examples in our in our cafe, um, but that's, that's the goal, right? We want to be a place where the community can gather and have a good cup of coffee while they're there. For sure. And I'm excited about those who attend our Converge Conference uh, October 11th, that they're going to hear more about that with your journey, as well as the journey of four or five others that have done in a variety of ways, things that are raising up our community, yeah. elevating people, elevating purposes and causes, all of which are centered around community and renewal. And that's that's one of the things that I've loved in the 14 years that I've lived in this community is the many ways I can look around and go, wow, this street is really nice now, yeah. or there's more businesses here now, or this area is really coming along in terms of just the look and the vibe and and the success of the business owners yeah. along that street. You know, I mean, one of the cool parts about it is it's there's not just one person responsible for right. all of that, right? Like right. a revitalization of a neighborhood of a street takes so many parties. You know, you've got business owners who are, you know, taking a risk and saying, hey, I'm going to open a business here. Yep. You've got landlords who are willing to help facilitate that happen. If a building's being renovated, obviously there's hands there doing the work. Um, you know, there's government agencies and, and, and public officials who help make that happen mm -hmm. and approve things that need to be approved. So, I, there's just so many, so many hands, so many people who yeah. bring that revitalization to fruition. Uh, 
it's truly a community effort, which is one of the cool it parts is. about it. I think. It, you know, the old saying, it takes a village. Yeah. It does. Um, you know, the, the economic development groups for the various communities, the individual businesses, the the landlords who say, hey, I'm going to I'm going to reno this building. And I think people will want to have their office or their business here. Yeah. So, again, they're betting on themselves or betting on the likelihood of that becoming a, a really vibrant, thriving business yeah. or, or the home for such a thing like that. So, uh, yeah, so it's going to be fun to hear from you more than at the conference as well as uh, those that'll be a part of that. And we'll be talking to some of them in the days ahead. But thanks so much for coming in. It's yeah. good to have you with us. And uh, we'll, we'll do this again soon. My pleasure. Thanks, Jeff. <laughs> thanks for listening to Leadership Level Up. Please subscribe so you don't miss future conversations with great leaders. If you would like to learn more about executive coaching and team development, please go to convergegroup.io for more information. 